Okay, so I'm today I'm going to talk about three major, major dongles which are using, and this, they are most popular in the, okay, two of them at least are most popular are in the world. And if someone, maybe employer will ask you which you are, was dealing with that at least with those two, you will be familiar at least or heard, yes. and. And in fact, laps we will do, do in the third one, which is not that popular, but I think in the last years it became popular as well. So, I will talk about three S SDRs. I will talk about RTL SDR. This is receive only dongle, which is very popular. I will talk about how it's built inside, what you can do with it, and so on. And then we will switch to USRP, which is uh, most, I think, popular in the scientific research. And there is a lot of different USRPs. I even have very expensive ones. I will show you later. So this is even staying in this room. And uh, a down Pluto, which we will use for the laboratory works. Mm. Okay. Kind of. Do you see my sharing? I think. Yes, we can see. Must be good. Yes, and uh, first of all, I maybe wish to pay your attention to the spectrum. Yes, the spectrum of. Okay, I will use this screen then, because then I will look to camera at least, and. Uh, Nowadays, there is a lot of various things running around and and for which could SDR could be used. There is just a few examples of the most popular services, which I think the students of, of our faculty should know at which frequencies approximately we, where they are working. So this is very important also. That's why I included this, this slide. So you could approximate understanding about frequencies we are talking about. So if we go from the lower end, yes, here, um, modern SDRs are able to work in given on, let's say, short waves from maybe one megahertz, but there is not very much use of those low frequencies for the uh, commercial and industrial. Maybe they are used by, by the radio amateurs or some short wave radio stations in some countries, but still there is not very much use. So that's it. That's why we will look only from the one megahertz, 100 megahertz and most, and SDRs we are, we, we are using, they are capable of all of those frequencies. So theoretically we can implement of any of those services using the software divided radios, which we have in our laboratory works, for example. So FM radio, yes, and this uh, aeronautical signals are going to the lower end. Here you can listen FM radio stations. And this is what we will do today in the laboratory work. This is what we I showed, have shown you last time, but Today, we will try to accomplish this by ourselves. Aeronautical. Aeronautical, that means that this is uh, transponders on the airplanes. Yes, this is, you can create easily some device which listens to signals from the airplanes. 
because they are not encoded. And that's how, for example, flight radar, maybe you have heard about such service or application, you can mo have mobile application showing where, which plane is located. This is crowdsourcing service and people using some software defined radius intercept signal from the airplane and send them to the server. It's uh, collects all information from the users and generate them up where you can see all airplanes where it's okay. This is solely based on the information which is transmitted by the airplane because airplane have to transmit its location, speed and, and some other parameters continuously using some portable device which is on the board. This is called transponder, yes? And this is necessary for the for some traffic control and other set, other whatever who wish to know what is it the plane nowadays there is also all modern drones also have such kind of signals which you can also detect and and show the map of the drones for example flying over the riga yes there is some services which already starting to do it and of course i'm not talking about the military planes and military drones or some toy toy planes or toy drones, which are not equipped with such, with such, such, such devices. And this is, this two, 300, this is, I think this is kind of specific ones. Here would be interesting, this is the television range. This is from 500 to 800. This is, analog and digital nowadays is broadcasting in this frequency range. This is so-called ultra high frequency and very high frequency band, VHF and UHF band. And then here at 800, we have mobile phones. So television doesn't go upper because here the mobile phones. Then here we have also 868. Age. This is this is ESM band. This is industrial scientific medical bands, and it means at 868 you can transmit anything, and we will use this band for the lab works. And also there is another ESM band at 433, where we can also can use after our software defined radius for transmitting anything for experimenting. This is so-called unlicensed bands where you can do anything what you wish but with limited power of course and also many uh, remote controls including cars are using those frequencies for the controlling doors for example or also doorbells nowadays a lot of radio devices working in this band and if you switch software defined radio you can intercept a lot of signals coming around from different remote controls. So this is again some very specific band, one until one five. And this is one very important range about 1.5. This is GPS radio locations but this is the gps signals from the satellite so if you wish to detect your location so you receive signals about 1.5 1.6 gigahertz they are coming from the space directly to your gps receiver nowadays this is a phone and uh, many other devices nowadays this is extremely cheap thing and you can buy gps receiver for maybe a few few euros only and for example for the microcontroller and so on this is unbelievable and this is another mobile another mobile range from 1.8 1.9 and this is 3g data communication 1921 this is wcdma band for the mobile operators 
And nowadays we have also somewhere LTE and 4G, but, but this is depending from the some countries it is in UK here, but in Latvia, I think we have something here for the LTE. And this is Wi-Fi 2.4 and Bluetooth. This is another, in fact, from 2.5, from 2.4, 2.5. This is another industrial scientific medical band where you can do anything on those frequencies between 2.4 to 5. That's why, for example, microwave ovens also are working and this frequency and if for example you open the door of the microwave oven and somehow manage to excuse me also sorry uh, we can't see the whole screen only some part is visible uh, you do uh, not see whole screen no oh, this is interesting we can see only up to 1.9 gigahertz Oh, it's interesting because it doesn't keep, okay, but if I now do like this, I, I understand this. Yes, yeah, this is a known bug that if you move window among two monitors, it stops sharing. Mm, sorry, so I will reshare now. Okay. Now it should be visible, yes? Or still? No, it's we can't see anything now. Only black screen and a white line. Okay, yes, I think that we need to stop share and then do new share. Yes, now it should be working because I see the green green frame around this one. So, is it visible now? Yes, it's clear. Okay, good. So, this is, yes, this is 3G mobile at 1.9 and something like and then this is uh, 2.4, 2.5. This is a, another ESM band, in fact, for which we can experiment and do anything. And Wi-Fi and Bluetooth is working here, but also microwave ovens. And yes, you can create great jammer if you just open the microwave oven and somehow put something into this door uh, open door, there is some kind of switch which detects if door in F if is open and it just switches off the microwave. But if you just put something that it thinks the door is closed, that you can jump whole Wi Fi band, yes, using microwave with open door. And this is a little bit dangerous as well. So you shouldn't stay very close to this. because there is very powerful microwave transmitter within the microwave oven and it works at 2.4 gigahertz. And this is of course 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi and many, many other frequencies nowadays up till 100 gigahertz you have automotive radars and a lot of things, but we do not have SDRs working at those frequencies, yes. so. We will not talk about this at this expensive end of the frequencies. The so first of all, which I'm going to talk, this is the general architecture. So in general, all SDRs are built like, like this. They have some kind of um, analog front end. And then it has some kind of analog to digital converter. And then it goes to some digital processor, which is inside the software defined radio. And then it goes via USB or Ethernet cable to the computer. 
and the rest of the processing is done on the computer. And uh, let's talk with about the simplest one first. And the simplest one is this RTLSDR, which is extremely cheap device. Yes, this is kind of three versions which are available and you can buy them easily. It costs about five euros, maybe 10. And there is some also metallic case versions and so on. And this is in fact, television receiver designed for the DVB digital video broadcasting terrestrial format, but it has some very nice feature that it could be reprogrammed as universal receiver without, and you can switch off this television part of this dongle and send samples directly to the computer without any hardware intervention into this very nice device. So what is inside here, if you open, there is a, two main things, I would say, two main chips. This is this tuner. Yes, this is analog tuner, which is responsible for RF radio frequency part. In those dongles, we have two kinds of tuners. Even I have a box in the shelf and part of them have one, tuner and part of them have another tuner. This is, of course, some Chinese rip-offs of those dongles, but it doesn't matter. It has two tuners. This is original tuner. This is Rafael Micro, tuner 820, digital television tuner, which is necessary for the RF, for the amplification of high-frequency signal, tuning and so on and so on. And another chip is this Realtek 2832. This is a very popular chip and it's responsible for this coded OFDM demodulator, but this is in fact, um, it contains all digital signal processing, including also this analog to digital converters and all this stuff is inside of this little chip. And besides this, there is some power supply. This is kind of, I think, additional stuff, but this is not important. And you can buy also this super small version and it is exactly the same contents, except that it's... And usually it goes also with remote control. Here we have also this remote control input and you can just switch your channels sitting far away from the computer. And this is expected, you switch, you plug it into the computer. But for example, I at home has Android box, connected to the TV. So I plug it there again, and I can watch uh, some television channels without any subscription. In Latvia, it was like four or five channels which are not encoded and you can watch them at any time using this dongle. Yes, you just, for example, plug it. If you have, for example, some Android phone, you, can, you should buy an OTG cable plug this OTG cable into Android phone that you can plug this into this phone and you can watch digital television and some TVs, but all they are in Latvian, so it's not that interesting for you. And, but, and also this is a lot of, of boring advertisements. So nowadays, I think young people do not watch TV at all, yes. So, but still there is some possibility. For example, if you wish to know some, some news or 
or if you if for example i wish to look to the celebration new year celebration of the president i usually switch tv and then look to it okay so what is inside logically here logically inside is this is this analog tuner yes this is there is a low noise amplifiers and this is some kind of digital this is analog filter here then is the analog mixer analog intermediate frequency low pass filter and gain control this is goes everything goes inside the small chip of the tuner and this goes into this rtl 2832 this is some kind of filter, analog filters, and it goes analog to digital converter, and then it goes to digital. All this stuff is digital. The rest is digital. So that means that those mixer, mixer already is in digital domain. That means that actually it's mixing some numbers. Yes, it's, it is digital multipliers that multiply streams of numbers going from the analog to digital converter. And here, this is a, some, some sinus and cosinus tables stored into the memory. Those tables get multiplied by numbers from the ADC. Here you get some numbers out. And this is goes this filtering. Here, is, he have, here we have a digital filter, which does digital filtering. And those samples then goes out to the USB port and then it goes to the computer, it receives those samples and the simulink, for example, continuous processing of those samples. And finally we hear sound or, or get some picture on the TV, yes. This is, in fact, this is incredibly complex device anyway for, for and there is, need very high education to understand very deep yes how it works and i'm not going it's not it's not our purpose of this course i'm just saying that it's this it's extremely cheap but inside this is anyway very complicated and to design such kind of chips you need very 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 good technical background yes Okay, this is some examples of the signals going inside here. So this is goes for antenna. Here we have uh, let's imagine that we wish to receive the station at some carrier frequency and maximum bandwidth which this dongle can capture, this is 2.8 megahertz. So this bandwidth travels here, here, here over the analog part. And after the mixing with this, it goes down to 14 megahertz. Any carry frequency, for example, if you're receiving some TV, TV, remember, was like, like, where it was yes this is tv band is here this is from approximately 450 until 800 so the signal is somewhere here this signal goes down to 14 megahertz so this f this is f what is this no, what is the letter? If this is intermediate frequency, it is 14 megahertz. So it no. Yes, yes, yes. Analog to digital converter goes to 28 megahertz. That means this is a half of this. This is 14.4. So no, okay. 14.4, this is a maximal limit which can listen, but it goes around, I think, 
what is the intermediate frequency here? was something like 3 megahertz or something like this. And then this mixer, this is another mixer brings it down to zero. Yes. But at this point before this mixer, it still has some, some central frequency like like, I don't know. ADC. Sample rate. Ah, oh, this, yes, it's, this is 3.57 megahertz. So that means this is 3.57. And there is a zero somewhere. So this is not very correct picture, by the way, because it's, it is not symmetric by far. And then this digital mixer already, because this mixing of tables of sinus and cosinus, this, this stream from the ADC brings down to zero and double frequency, but there is filter which eliminates this Elias after mixing. And then we have like baseband signals. This is called baseband signal because it is around zero and contains already filtered useful channel. So it is already eliminated all the rest of the frequencies and we have don't convert it our modulated signal to the zero frequency, but no further processing happens here. It just does shifting of the carrier frequency to the zero and removing all these other signals because antenna has a lot of signals inside. Yes, and you have to remove everything using those numerous filters here very gently, not to damage your main signal. And then it goes, goes to the computer. Yes, this is an example also, if you have radio station of 102, that immediate frequency, so this heterodyne frequency is 98.33, this is frequency here. So this 93 point something get mixed with this 100 and it produces those three megahertz here, which goes to the ADC. And this is this image frequency is rejected. And this is then go sample this 28 megahertz clock. So, So theoretically, what you can do with this dongle, is this is a lot. FM radio, which we will do in laboratory work. You can find the project for the aeronautical signals, transponder listening, lot of software you can buy, you can find in the internet and, and, and so on and so on. You can listen for the meteorological signals, for example, data from the radars and everything. It's also open, you can listen to it. This is not in Latvia. Special events, for example, of emergency broadcasts. This is not in Latvia. ESM band, where's a lot of 
remote controls for the cars. You can spy and jump. Um, some students did our individual projects on the um, decoding and trying to understand or, or, or even one student demonstrated that it can um, open the car using software defined radio by recording the signal. But this works only on older cars because all modern how cars have very quite strong encryption over the signal and also dynamic dynamic codes and you can it and you cannot predict the next code from the remote control very easily and that's that's how this protection works but anyway there is a lot of methods to break also in such systems for example all these keyless go systems also are breakable using some special equipment and uh, okay lte but i think this dongle will work until like something like maybe maybe at, at, at 433 it works fine but we just tried to do something for gps and it works quite poorly because it's designed for the tv band and tv band stops at 800 so all about 800 works quite poorly let's say using this dongle and that's why you need something else okay now about the pluto sdr which we will use in our laboratory works this is device it is it looking like this we will use those devices in all laboratory works it is based on uh, AD9363. This is a transceiver for this LTE modems. Of course, no one will create cheap for the software defined radio. It's because it's too expensive. You need millions of, of, of copies to pay back design of the chip. If there is no market for, I don't know, million of chips, nobody will design it. Even, even I have heard, for example, it's also about a rest of electronic components. For example, the screens, yes. If you can buy the screen for the mobile phone you know, on AliExpress for let's say 10, 20 euros for many, if it is some basic model, yes. But the design of the screen costs, I think, maybe million, yes. And if there is no any vendor who wish to buy million screens from the production company, it will not even start designing and producing those screens because it will not pay back because they need this R and D in all this um, stuff adds to the actual cost of the production of single copy when it is already in production. So production cost, yes, maybe it's like maybe two dollars or two euros. So the Chinese and sellers sell it send for ten and get eight eight in bonus, but the design of the screen costed a lot. And for example, our we have some companies in Latvia who wish to order something. They, for example, try to order some HDMI chips, which are used in the mobile phones in, in Samsung. And they said that they will not sell those chips because they do not wish by million at once and they are not interested to sell such small amounts. They wish to buy something like 100 or 200 chips 
as they refuse to sell them those ones because it's too small amount. So this, all this microelectronics market is based on huge amounts of this, of copies which are produced. Okay, let's go back to here. This is the Zinq 7 This is quite popular system on chip, Silinx, which is inside this small, small device. It has USB 2 and it has some software and it costs like 200. At first they costed 100, but now the cost is lifted up until 200 because I think it was promotional cost, but not the real market cost of this device. What is inside, maybe it's not that interesting for you. There is a lot of different stuff. It is capable of two channel transmission and reception, but it device has only one receiver and transmitting input. And it has a lot of various stuff, but maybe it's important to remember that the output power is like eight plus eight dBm. This is six milliwatts. It is not much. Yes, like, like for example, your Wi-Fi has like maybe 100 milliwatts or something like this. And this is much less, but not, Anyway, you can transmit over maybe some, some hundreds of meters easily, the signals will propagate. And it depends from the frequency, of course. If you go to the higher frequencies, the range will be smaller. And at the lower frequencies, let's say, for example, it's the FM broadcasting frequency, I believe that it could be maybe kilometer, which you can listen this FM, you can create FM, radio station and listen it on your car radio, for example. So, and now this is, let's talk a little bit about the third software defined radio, which is used in scientific research. This is universal software defined software radio peripheral, so-called USRP. Have you heard about such stuff, no? No. Okay, those USRPs are quite popular and if you deal with some scientific research or something, there's just a lot of, lot of still popularity. This USRPs, are quite old and they were built like maybe already as many, many years has passed, like maybe 20 years, let's look. So in general, for example, in our university, we have like a lot of such devices, like, I don't know, like more than 10. 10, and they are used mostly for the various scientific research, some communications, wireless power transfer, and so on. And uh, some people also, my students used them for the bachelor thesis. I gave them and and they were very happy because Guy created mobile base station using on this and we will able to make calls to each other using fake mobile operator. But this is, was partly illegal, but we have some paper allowing us to do this experiments. But we use some mobile channels and we just partly was shadowing uh, I think some, some mobile communication tower. Okay, this was designed in 2004. So it means this is like 
almost 20 years ago. And it was at the times when the, there is a lot, lot of moment about the Linux and everybody about all this open source software and so on. This is beginning of 2000s because in 1998, Linux Torvalds created Linux operating system. And about after, after 2000, a lot of people, including me, was start to, to use Linux instead of Windows. And there is a lot of, lot of people who was quite big enthusiasts about using open source and so on and so on. And at that times, there's also some GNU radio project has have, 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 uh, conceived, yes. And the idea was to create some some software and hardware for the completely open source uh, radios for the transmission and receiving reception of the signals. And, and this guy, Matt Atos, created hardware for this. He also was big fan of the Linux and open source, and we created hardware for this GNU radio project. It was completely open source, it published, and uh, it became very popular because there was no any other hardware capable of running all this GNU radio and all this radio stuff. At the same time, Matworks started to work on some kind of drivers for this. And later it turned out that it is quite popular unit. And that's why in 2010 National Instruments has buy this company from this guy, I don't know, I dare think for big money. And now Atos Research, yes, this is his, his surname, is a part of national instruments, but still if you look here, you see this Atos Research emblem on all units. Yes, and this is, he was a master student who, when he did it, yes. And this is the first, one of the first USRPs which he decided, designed, yes. And this is uh, Carnegie Mellon University in the United States. Uh, and he, okay, he was, he graduated in 2000, 1997. So he designed after seven years, for which he, he was not master student. It was seven years after graduation. And so it was like, you know, already kind of engineer, I think, somewhere. But he created his company and I think now it's, he is a rich guy. And because he did this nice thing, 20 years ago. And, uh, but still this National Instruments is publishing all information about the USRPs. So you can go here. Yes, for to this website. This is a, how it looks like. It has all range of the products of the USRPs. For example, even expensive ones like N311 or X300, which is super expensive device. N200, but do not have N300, this is, Interesting. Okay, for example, B200. You go here. What you find? Schematics of this unit.
Okay. So theoretically, you can do something, but they do not publish. Oh, this is not much, really. I was thinking that they publish some. What I think there is. Yeah, but this is not all. And they also do not publish any source codes. This is just schematics. So, no, okay. Not a big deal. I think if you go to this old ones, USRP1, for example. Yes, schematics. Uh, but anyway, no software, no PCBs, no anything else. And this is kind of, I don't know how much this is open source in this case. Uh, but this is schematics. Okay, let's go to the, ah, we have binaries as well. We have images, we have, tutorials even. This is GNU Radio Companion Labs, which we will use, by the way, in our, in our work. And here we have GRC models, which we could use for this. We will have lab works in GNU Radio, and this could be useful. And this is even YouTube channel for all this stuff. Very nice. Cool. So this is kind of community around this USRPs. And I think this is one of the reasons why these USRPs are so popular in scientific research, because you have a lot of information, you can modify it, you can better, you can reprogram it for some specific things like 5G or 6G. And uh, let's, and I, I'm going also, we are going with one student with my, who is going to write masters to reprogram one of those devices. So this is kind of architecture, but this is also really complex stuff. It's a, in fact, this is a similar to this, uh, those cheap dongles for five euros, but there is also, of course, different frequencies because those RTL was working at 3.6 megahertz, but this is a 40 megahertz intermediate frequency. So it gets like at least 40 megahertz bandwidth. And this is down converter and so on. But, but in fact, logic is completely the same. And it has, as look here, yes, it has this Spartan FPGA and USB 3 controller and AD9364. Yes, remember that here in this, Okay, it was at the bottom. AD9363, this is a, almost the same chip. Ninety-three and 9364 are very, very similar chips. In fact, you can reprogram this Pluto 
9364, and then it will have some additional capabilities. You see there is this FPGA. FPGA is a very important topic nowadays. You cannot go anywhere. Some important processing without FPGAs. So FPGAs, guys, should be learned. And uh, here, of course, there is a lot of stuff. We can use this USRPs with, of course, all this popular software like MATLAB Simulink, GNU Radio, also LabWork, which is the main product of the national instruments. It's very similar to Simulink. This is competitor direct, very nice software, but we do not have a licenses. And some, I already said, one of the, my students created base station using this open bts open bts this is a project you can go to website download software for the computer and for this software defined radio put it everything inside and you will get and you can build the mobile base station 3G base station where you can make a calls, send SMSs. We tested those two features. So for example, if you somewhere in the deep countryside and there's no mobile network, you can build this. And then you can call each other using regular mobile phones because you will be able, uh, but of course, and you can program this, of course, to, to not use SIM card because it's possible to say that SIM card is not necessary. And you can call, you can take the, your mobile phone and call each other using this very nice thing. By the way, this is used for the example for the emergency services. I have heard them some in case, for example, of the earthquakes, uh, operator can deploy small base stations and uh, using this open BTS and software defined radios to make, for example, to some people who have stuck somewhere to make calls, even if this all this mobile infrastructure has been damaged and there is no power, but you, if you have helicopter, you can put this open BTS on the helicopter or maybe some drone nowadays and you can create express base station and make calls to each other. And this is, could be very nice feature because you do not need some special walkie talkie or something like this. You can make calls using regular phones. Yes, numbering of course will not work. Yes, you must understand that if you connect to some unknown network, you should only numbers you can call. This is could be like 112 emergency service because every phone has capability to call 112 even without the SIM card. So if you deploy such network using open BTS, it will work. I don't know what is this. But this is also kind of 4G base station project. But I don't, I know there is several projects already of 4G base stations for the software defined radios, for those of the shell software defined radios. So because I already said that mobile operators also use specific software defined radios units produced by Ericsson or I don't know who is the mobile. I don't know, pro provider, Nokia has also, hey, they built some specific software defined service exclusively only for the base stations, but, but this could run on, on this general units. Yes, like USRPs, maybe on others, because this is not only of software defined radios available in the market. There is a lot of smaller ones, like, I don't know, dozens of smaller, software defined radios, you can buy and experiment and, and so on and so on. But USRP, 
is super popular. RTL SDR is very popular. And the down Pluto also is quite popular. And we will use this in our lab works. That's why I'm talking about them and mention, yes. Okay. Some applications of the USRPs, you can create RFP. You know what is this RFID? Yes, radio frequency ID. This is usually some keys, yes, which, which you can put the key near the door and you can open. How it works, it, when you put this key, this transmitter starts to transmit some specific signal. And if you, this, the small, like also this payment cards, now they use this, but they use like things, this NFC technology, which is kind of subversion of RFID. This near field communication. So I already said the base station, you can create a GPS receiver, TV decoder, you can create passive. This, those projects are available in the internet, so you can download and use them without any programming. Passive radars, that means it just monitors reflections from the objects, for example, broadcasting and mobile stations send some signals, they reflect, and you can analyze those reflective waves and build the picture of, of objects behind the wall, for example. This is one of the applications where these passive radars are used already. For example, police can easily, using such passive radar, see if there are terrorists inside the building, and even they could know in which place humans are. And this is synthetic aperture radar. That means that it kind of radar with uh, this synthetic aperture. That means that it has some. some tricky method to avoid big antenna. S SAR. Yes, this SAR is used also in, in cars. And amateur radio, but amateur radio could use tennis. This is the parameter. So the maximum bandwidth for B210 is like, like 61 mega sample per second. So actual bandwidth is like, like 30 megahertz, I would say, because they, they write in the documentation up to 50 megahertz, but if you have sample rate 61, so you have aliasing at half of the frequencies, I would say that 30 is the limit and, and also, this USB 3 link is not capable of, of dealing with high bandwidth signals. Yes, this USB 2, which have we will have on Pluto, is, is, is capable like maximum maybe one megahertz, two megahertz. USB 3 link on, on, on USRP is capable of dealing with like signals of 20 megahertz. Why it's important? Because, for example, Broadcasting radio stations are bandwidth of the one radio stations is like 200 kilohertz. It's a, not a problem for this even small dongle and USB 2 interface. But for example, if you wish create a LTE, one LTE channel is five megahertz. So the bandwidth which should be able to handle, this is five megahertz. And in this case, USB 2 will not be able to work. And we also doing a lot of experiments in, in our labs. And in, if we wish to have some signals 
above one megahertz in bandwidth, we have to use USRPs because other this Plutos will not be capable to, to transmit this information. And this is well known. If, for example, if you have some kind of USB instruments, for example, we have also those uh, analog discovery units for the students. And this analog discovery states that it has sample rate about 100 megahertz. But because of the USB 2 interface, it can capture only a very small piece of the signal because it is not capable to transmit in real time the measurements between this, this analog discovery and computer and maximum rate at which you can record signals in the computer continuously, it is like one megahertz because otherwise it will start to drop samples and about at approximately three megahertz, three megahertz, it hangs up and completely stops working. So 100 megahertz only for small piece. When you just do not send it, you just store it into the internal memory of the device and then slowly send to the computer. But it could be not be done continuously because you can you you can fill memory and then you have to stop. Software defined radios are expected to work continuously. That's why this interface is very important. And for example, I have much more powerful devices. You see, I have such units here. This is, this is you see, USLP S. This is N310. This is very, very powerful ones. It has four channels here in the input. It has gigabit Ethernet interface for the high-speed connection to the computer. This is for the networking. It has also this USB micro USB, I think, but this is for the debugging. And you see, this is also a lot of ports on the other side. This is a lot of, you can connect a lot of antennas. You also could connect some synchronization cables if you need to synchronize several devices. And this unit costs 15,000 euros. Okay, but this is for the scientific research. Yes, it's not for the students and not because we need some very serious applications and we will do some research in ultra wideband communications using those devices. But I have now to find some students which are interested in this work and capable to do it. We will have some interviews soon and Hopefully, we will find someone who will work at the university with all this stuff. So this is about the hardware. So today we was like I already said, this is kind of seminar, not not very serious thing. Just just introduction about the hardware. Maybe it was a little bit also boring because a lot of information, a lot of technical parameters. But still, I think it could be very useful for you, especially if you are going to work somewhere to have some at least impression about the frequencies, about capabilities, about the, how they are built inside. Yes. and. This software defined radio segment is actively developing. And this, of course, a lot of specific software defined radios, not for general use and not for the students and so on, going inside some industrial equipment. But anyway, 
if you go to some R&D, for example, or even for, for companies. Uh, for example, I had one student who was working for some company who, who was uh, building airplanes or something like this in Latvia. And they need software, and he used software defined radio knowledge for the debugging some, uh, some, uh, some communication equipment on this device, on this airplane. I do not remember what it was exactly, some kind, but it was not radar, it was kind of onboard system. They used some ready-made components, but they had some bug. It was some kind, it's not, not, not Boeing, yes, it was small airplanes, like for private flights and so on. A lot of people are, are building such stuff, I think. Um, it is kind of hobby, but it was kind of company doing this. In Latvia, a lot of companies are doing drones and all these boats, aeroplanes, a lot of stuff. So that's it approximately about the hardware. Let's meet at 2.30 at 